In the last video, we summarized the properties of the rhombus, and we found that the rhombus is a type of parallelogram that has all of the same properties that parallelograms do, but in addition, the rhombus will be special in that all of the sides are going to be equal in length. The diagonals are also going to bisect at 90 degrees, and in addition, the diagonals are going to bisect the interior angles. So in this lesson, I'm going to prove that the diagonals are going to bisect at 90 degrees, as well as prove that the diagonals are going to bisect the interior angles. So those last two properties of the rhombus that we discussed in our last video, I'm going to prove in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw our rhombus right here. So we know in our rhombus, all of the sides are going to be equal in length. That is just something that we know about the rhombus. So each of these sides are equal. So here we have our rhombus and I'm just going to label it A, B, C, D. And this middle intersection point I'm going to label as E. Another thing I'm going to do is just label these individual angles with one and two so we can differentiate between the two angles at point A. So I'm going to label this A1, this is going to be A2, this is going to be B1 and B2, this is going to be D1 and D2, and this will be C1 and C2. And E is going to have E1, E2, E3, and E4. So all of this information that we have on this rhombus, and it is quite a lot of information, is just from our properties of parallelograms and the fact that a rhombus is a parallelogram that has all four sides of equal length. So everything that we've got in here is just based on the properties of parallelograms. So if there's anything you're unfamiliar with, please refer back to my video on the properties of parallelograms. And that is where you will get all of this information that we have our opposite angles equal. Our sides are all equal in length because our rhombus is a parallelogram with all sides equal in length. Our diagonals are going to bisect one another. So this is going to be equal to this and this will be equal to this. And what I want to prove now is that the diagonals of a rhombus are going to be perpendicular bisectors. And that means that each of them are going to create a 90 degree angle when they intersect with one another. So E1, 2, 3, and 4 are all going to be 90 degree angles. And that is what I'm going to prove. So the first thing that I want to make a note of here is that we have quite a few congruent triangles. So let's take a look at a, B, E. Triangle A, B, E. That is going to be this triangle over here. Triangle A, B, E is congruent to triangle C, B, E. So this triangle is congruent to this triangle. And why are they congruent? Well, they're congruent because as we can see, they're both going to share this side, this side B, E. That is going to be common between both of these triangles. So they already have one side length in common. In addition, both of these triangles are going to have their bottom side that is going to be equal in length. Side AE is equal in length to side CE. So they both have BE, and then they're going to have this bottom side which is equal between them. And in addition, this side is also going to be equal between our two triangles. AB is equal in length to BC. That's just one of our rhombus properties that each of these side lengths are equal. So this side length is equal to this side length. So in these two triangles, ABE and CBE, they're going to have three corresponding sides that are equal in length. So by the side 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 rule of congruency, triangle ABE is congruent to triangle CBE. So triangle ABE is congruent to triangle CBE because of the side 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 rule. So because these two triangles are congruent, we know that all of their corresponding sides, which we have already seen, are equal. In addition, we know that all of their corresponding angles are going to be equal. And that means that A1 is going to be equal to C1. So angle A1 is going to be equal to angle C1. Then angle B1 will be equal to angle B2. These are two corresponding sides in our two congruent triangles. So B1 is going to be equal to B2. 
and E1 is going to be equal to E2. E1 and E2 are the two corresponding angles of our congruent triangles. So E1 is going to be equal to E2. And this is just because all of these are corresponding angles in our congruent triangles. And when two triangles are congruent, all of the corresponding angles are equal. Now, there's one special thing that I want to make note of with E1 being equal to E2 here. E1 and E2 are going to fall on a straight line. And we know that a straight line is going to be made up of 180 degrees. So we know that E1 plus E2, angle E1 plus angle E2, are going to equal 180 degrees. And that's because they are angles on a straight line. So we know that E1 has to be equal to E2, and E1 plus E2 are 180 degrees, which means that E1 is equal to 90 degrees, and E2 is also equal to 90 degrees. Angle E1 and angle E2 are going to both be equal to 90 degrees because we know they have to be equal and they have to sum to 180. So we have just proven that this is a 90 degree angle and that this is a 90 degree angle. Now let's focus on these bottom two triangles. So if we look at triangle ADE, that is going to be this triangle down here, ADE is going to be congruent to CDE, again for the same reason that these two triangles were congruent. We can see that ADE is going to have this side length, which is going to be the same as this side length in triangle CDE. ADE has this length, which is equal to this length in the other triangle, and they share the side DE between them, so they're going to have three sides that are equal between them. So we know that triangle ADE is congruent to triangle CDE because, again, of the side, side, side rule. And we know that because they're congruent, their corresponding angles are also going to be congruent. So that means that A2 will be equal to C2. So angle A2 is equal to angle C2. Angle D1 will be equal to angle D2. And angle E3 will be equal to angle E4. And again, this is just because A2 and C2, D1 and D2, and E3 and E4 are all corresponding angles in our two congruent triangles. So they are going to be equal because our triangles are congruent. And again, because E3 is equal to E4, that is E3 over here is equal to E4, and again, we're going to see that E3 and E4 are falling on a straight line. That means that they each need to be equal to 90 degrees. So because E3 plus E4 are going to be equal to 180 degrees and they have to be equal to each other, E3 is 90 degrees and E4 is also 90 degrees. So this angle is also 90 and this angle is also 90. So what we have just done is we have proven that in a rhombus, the diagonals are going to intersect at 90 degrees. They are perpendicular bisectors of one another. The diagonals are going to bisect each other at 90 degrees each time. And we know that that means that these lines are perpendicular to one another because when they intersect, they are going to be creating four 90 degree angles. Now, there's something else that I want to make a note of, and that is, well, we've already determined through these two examples that B1 is equal to B2. So angle B1 is equal to B2. And we've also shown here that angle D1 is equal to angle D2. So B1 and B2 are the same, and D1 and D2 are the same. So we have already shown that this green diagonal is going to bisect the interior angles D and B 
because we can see that this diagonal is going to split angle B into two equal sized angles because B1 is equal to B2. That means this angle is equal to this angle. So this green diagonal has split angle B into two equal parts. And it's done the same with angle D. D1 is equal to D2, so this angle is equal to this angle. So our green diagonal has also split angle D into two equal sized parts. Now what I want to show is that the orange diagonal is going to split angle A into two equal sized parts and angle C into two equal sized parts. And that is going to prove that the diagonals in a rhombus are going to bisect the interior angles. They're going to split all of the interior angles into two equal parts. So now if we take a look at triangle ABE, which is this top triangle, we can see that triangle ABE is going to also be congruent to triangle ADE. That's because they are both going to have one of these sides which is equal between them. AB is equal in length to AD. In addition, they share side AE, so that is going to be a common side length between them. And now BE is going to be equal in length to DE, so triangle ABE is congruent to triangle ADE because of the side, side, side rule. So ABE up here is congruent to ADE down here. And that means that all of their corresponding angles are equal. We can already see that E1 and E3, which are the corresponding angles between these two triangles, are equal because they're both equal to 90 degrees. In addition, we know that D1 will be equal to B1. Those are corresponding angles. But the special thing that I want to take, make a note of here is that A1 and A2, which are also corresponding angles between our two congruent triangles, are also going to be equal. So A1 is going to be equal to A2 because they are corresponding angles in our congruent triangles. And the same logic is going to go for triangle BCE and triangle DCE. These two triangles are going to be congruent for the same reasons. They have three corresponding sides that are equal in length between them. So triangle BCE is congruent to triangle DCE, again, because of the side, side, side rule. And while that means that D2 will be equal to B2 and E2 will be equal to E4 because those are all corresponding angles, the major takeaway is going to be that C1 will be equal to C2 because again, those are also corresponding angles. So angle C1 will be equal to angle C2. And now what we have just shown is that in addition to B1 equaling B2 and D1 equaling D2, A1 also equals A2 and C1 also equals C2. So we have shown that the diagonals are going to bisect each of the interior angles. Each of these interior angles are going to be split into two equal sized parts by the diagonals because B1 equals B2, D1 equals D2, A1 equals A2, and C1 equals C2.